Good morning, Facebook. Thank you so much for joining. It's the Civilized Presence. You are in the right place. So come on in and let me know where you're joining us from. Give us a moment uh, for Facebook to get this video visible to everyone. I'm so excited to have you here this morning. Thank you for making out time. Just give us two minutes. So we have to share this video. How are you today? It's a beautiful Monday morning right here in Virginia. Um, the weather is not too, not too friendly, but we are happy. Welcome everyone. I can see that the video is coming on. Just give us a moment. Facebook is trying to make it happen. Okay. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So I'm trying to bring this on. Okay. Facebook, we're using a different platform this morning. We're using Zoom. So when we use Zoom, just give us a moment. Sometimes things don't run that fast. But we are almost there. All right. I don't know what's going on. Welcome to the Civilized Presence. You are in the right place. Thank you so much for joining this morning. Thank you, thank you. Um, let me know if you can see me and just come in and say a quick hello. Thank you, thank you. Um, we have a lot of people online who are just waiting for this session. Welcome, welcome, coming in and say hello. All right. Okay. We're almost there. And Facebook is not being too friendly this morning, but guys, we're going to be there. Uh, give us a moment, Mr. Derek. We're almost there. We're excited. And um, this is coming on. Just give us one more minute just to get this video up and running. Okay. Welcome everyone. It's gonna be a great topic, so just hang on. Uh, we were having a little bit of technical difficulties, but I'm excited that we're finally here. Uh, okay, 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 okay. Yes, Facebook is already notifying me that a lot of people are interested in the video. So I know that, so just bring it on. <laughs> Okie dokie, I think we're good to go right now. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. It's the Civilized Presence. I am so excited, I'm so thrilled that you made our time to be here. It's a Monday morning and I am, I am excited. I don't know about you. I know Mondays, people have their Monday blues. They don't want to get out of bed, but I'm just so excited about this session today because we have someone who is very special in our midst and he has the most amazing message, guys. So you want to come in and invite your friends and family, your neighbors, Invite everyone, your enemies, that's okay. Bring them on, it's a great message. Um, welcome to the Civilized Presence. I can see Sandra, uh, Brian, it's good to have you. Uh, Esther, it's good to have you. Charles, it's good to have you. Guys, if I haven't mentioned your name, probably you're not directly on my personal page. I'm using a different platform this morning. So you might have to come in and say something for me to be able to, you know, see that you're there. So come in, give us some hearts, give us some thumbs up. The hat means, um, you know, Derek, we are excited to see you. And the thumbs up is, Louisa, you are doing it. Just bring it on. So come in and give us the support, guys. We, we love you. And just coming in, we're like five minutes late, but, you know, we're going to do it. But thank you so much for making our time. Civilized Presence is an online TV session where lives are changed where people discover their self, purpose, and voice, and of course, learn social skills to thrive in the real world. So if you wanna become a change maker, you are in the right place. My name is Louisa Akaizo, and I am gonna be your host 
for today. I feel so honored and thrilled that you stopped by to party with us this morning. Did you make it to the little music session? You know, just to get you warming up because I know this part of the world, we are cold here. So grab your cup of coffee. I hope you have something to drink. Um, get your bottle of water if you're in Africa because our network and audience is global. So guys, wherever that you find yourself, get a piece of paper or your journal and pen and be ready to learn because we have Mr. Derek in the house. And anytime you have Mr. Derek, it's time for you to learn. So guys, come on in. It's going to be a great session this morning. I don't know if you've seen the flyer. If you've seen the post, are you watching me on replay? Welcome. Where did you find me? Are you on Instagram and you're watching this later on? Welcome. Are you on um, YouTube? Welcome. It's so great to have you here. Now, civilized presence, like I mentioned to you, is an online TV session. And the main focus here is really to help restore civility in our society. And Mr. Derek, I tried to share it on your page. It's not happening. Can you share it on your page? Can you share this video? Maybe you have to pick it up from my page and put it on your page. And welcome, Seville. It's so great to have you here. So if you've been hanging out with me, you would have learned that civility is really focused on positive people's treatment, treating others the way that you want to be treated. And you can begin with little things like saying please and thank you or good morning, or even share a compliment, just like I'm going to do right now, that Mr. Derek, you look amazing this morning. It's so mm -hmm. good to have you here all the way from Kenya. I really appreciate you, my brother. Thank you so much for making out time. So some of you might be asking, who is she? Yes, Louisa Arcaizo is my name, and I am a certified master civility trainer and a leadership coach and expert with the John Maxwell team. And I work confidently with leaders and professionals that place great importance in themselves and their reputation. And of course, that's going to be you this morning because you made out time to hang out with us. So come on in as a VIP that you are and just say a quick hello. Give us some thumbs up and just share this video on your page. Come on in. It's good to have you here. Guys, we're using a different platform. I know some of you, when I use the Zoom, I find that... Um, you know, notifications are a little bit delayed before it comes up. So, um, hi, Izzy. It's good to have you here from Canada. Thank you so much. Baller from London, UK. Thank you so much. It's good to have you. Um, Charles, it's good to have you. Uh, Wenger from Nigeria. It's good to have you. Ifi from Nigeria. It's good to have you in the house. Um, Nana from Ghana. It's good to have you in the house. Thank you so much, guys, for joining us. It's going to be great this morning. So the main goal really of this series is to help break down civility into tiny bits that are easy for you to understand, but also see how important it is for you to be civil. So it's not, you know, a matter of choosing if you want to be civil on Monday and then you're falling out of track on Friday. No, we want you to be able to embrace this as a lifestyle. And like we would normally do, I would love to share with you a definition of civility. And I've chosen today one from Dr. P.F. Funny that states that being civil means being constantly aware of others and weaving restraint, respect, and consideration into this very fabric of awareness. So civility is a form of goodness, a form of gracious goodness. Treat others the way that you want to be treated. Apologize earnestly if you have to, guys. I know some of us struggle with that. Sometimes we just want to argue and argue and argue, and that's not being civil. So this is why you have to hang up with me every Mondays and Fridays, because you would be able to learn great terms of great nuggets for you to just begin to live the life that you ever had dreamed of. Now, some of you might have seen the post or the flyer, or maybe you haven't. Um, but if you saw the post, I shared a, my favorite quote from David Carso that states that it is very important for us to understand that emotional intelligence is not the triumph of the heart over the head, 
but it is a unique intersection of both. Because I know people love to ask me those questions, why emotional intelligence? And these days we have positive intelligence, we even have artificial intelligence, and they try to find out why, you know, all of these different types of intelligence. This is why you have to be here today, because you will get to learn why this is so important, how can, you can acquire the skills, and, you know, you can learn so much just from being in the show. So first of all, I'm going to allow my guest to say hello to the audience before I introduce him. So over to you, Derek, to say hello. Louisa, good morning, and thank you so much. I am humbled, I am delighted, and I am so thrilled to be here with you this morning. It is about 3.30 in uh, East Africa, Kenya, Nairobi. Maybe not as cold as DC, but uh, we've been experiencing a little bit of rain. So hopefully this conversation will- Wow, it's gonna <laughs> have to warm somebody up. <laughs> so I wanna say hello to everybody. And um, just a little bit about myself. Uh, I was born and raised in Nairobi, Kenya. I actually traveled to the US to complete my first degree. So I do have some experience of the weather you're, exp <laughs> you're going through right now. I lived in um, New York for about five years. And then I left and uh, I moved to Europe, where I moved to, uh, I think the coldest country in, in, in Europe called Finland, where the snow begins in September and doesn't let up until April. So I also had that experience where I got a second degree. Uh, in between, I was working. Uh, my first job was in finance. So I actually worked for a company called Bloomberg after graduating mm -hmm. from college in the, in the US in, in New York City. Uh, mm. I then eventually decided to return to the land of my birth, which is uh, Kenya, where uh, I can say over the last seven to eight years, what I've been doing is working with professionals of all stripes, whether they work in telecoms or they work in the FMCG industry. Mm. Uh, some of my clients even include uh, people who are politicians and entertainers. Uh, basically, everybody who needs to be seen, that's S-double-E-N, to be heard and to be remembered for the right reasons. So that's what I do. I help my clients create an image for themselves to develop the soft skills, to be able to create a personal brand so that they can go out and really connect with their target market, maybe increase the earning potential, uh, have a better relationship with their customers. And so through all of these various topics that I cover, whether it's image or etiquette or personal branding, or like today's topic, emotional intelligence, where it's about being remembered by your target market, I help my clients uh, become the best version of themselves. Perfect. This is, this is great, guys. I, I just told you we only bring the best to the show. Okay, so when you see someone on the screen, they are amazing and doing beautiful and tremendous work in their country or wherever that they were based in. And uh, Mr. Derek, which you're about to just kind of enjoy a little bit of him, uh, you know, is so impactful. He's doing a lot of work uh, with, you know, individuals, organizations all over the world. So you can connect with him, of course, on social media. And I'll share with you how to do that uh, right at, just towards the end of this session. So Mr. Derek, welcome. And I am so excited that you made out time to be here. Now, how this works really is to begin the conversation with a question and then we get started. And of course, um, at some point, guys, we're gonna run this a little differently today. We're gonna to have a great presentation um, by Mr. Derek, um, uh, you know, in a couple of minutes time. But we'll first of all, begin the conversation with what does civility mean to you? Over to you, Mr. Derek. Oh, wow, what a question. What does civility mean to me? Well, I think in a day and age where technology has taken over, that is the curse or the blessing of living in the 21st century, where we, I think for many of us, have sort of lost the way we communicate with each other. And when I say by lost, I mean truly 
speaking from the heart to the heart. Whether that communication is in the world of business or that communication is you talking to your loved one uh, at home, your children, your husband, your wife, whatever the case might be. So civility to me is restoring that lost art of communicating from the heart to the heart, where mm. it is about the other person. It is about making an emotional connection. Civility mm. is about connecting in an emotional economy. That's what civility is to me. And if I truly connect with the other individual, then I think everything else flows into place. The way I treat you, the way that I speak with you, even if I have to tell you something that might not necessarily be what you want to hear. And I'll cover that a little bit in my emotional intelligence. The civility allows me to use emotional reasoning in trying to tell you that perhaps there is something that uh, didn't please me about some action that you took. That, Louisa, is what I love that. I love that. From the heart to the heart. Guys, it, it has to be from the heart. You know, really treating others the way that you want to be treated. And it, I mean, that means that you're really concerned about them, paying attention to the next person. You know, we're in a world where we're so in a hurry these days that people don't even care. People push you down. And, you know, um, I love to share uh, true life experiences. I remember yesterday I went for, um, it was a business expo event and uh, slash fall festival business expo. That was on Saturday. And you know what? There was just this one set and we had this young lady sitting there, uh, the two sets, she, had, she was sitting there and she had a purse on the next set. And there was an elderly woman who requires a seat and she couldn't be bothered. She was on her phone. And I'm thinking, really? Really, ma'am? <laughs> she needs a seat. This woman is over 70. She needs a seat. And you know, guys, Honestly, when I find things like that, I just cannot keep quiet. I just had to tap her. I said, ma'am, the woman needs a seat. I don't need one. I'm still young, but she needs a seat. But she, you know, and she was, she was very upset about it. She was, you know, had demeanor, everything changed. But I couldn't be bothered at that time because I had to put myself in the shoes of the 70-something-year-old woman who is in pain and is struggling to stand, is bending, and you are sitting comfortably. And I'm thinking, what is you know, happening to our generation? Um, this is why this message is still so relevant every single day, guys. And like you learned from me here that the three hours of civility is um, uh, respect, responsibility, and restraint. You know, you cannot stay away from respect. And I just love what Mr. Derek shared from the heart. From the heart shows respect. Respect is something as a lost art. Like it's, it's so difficult to find it these days. Um, stepping away from yourself, getting into somebody else's space, but respecting them. Um, and this is why you have to come on here every Mondays and Fridays. If it, that's something that you're struggling with, we teach you the how, the easiest way of you to be civil, how you can begin. I mean, you know, in North America, people do not say hello to their neighbors. And I always say that if you haven't talked to your neighbor before, that's okay. But at least if you come to my show, you will learn that it's so important and an easy way to go about it. And welcome, Derek. It's great to have you. Jelina, it's so good to have you in the house. Thank you so much. Uh, Kate, it's good to have you in the house. Thank you so much. Barbara, thank you for being here. Blessing, thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited. Okay, so this takes us to our next question for you, uh, Mr. Derek. And that is, what does emotional intelligence um, mean to you? I mean, emotional intelligence is so many great things to different people. You know, some of us look at it as a set of skills, you know, that helps you to manage yourself and other people's emotions. But how can you break this down into the simplest form for my audience to understand? Over to you, Mr. Derry. First of all, it's a simple fact that all of us have emotions. Mm. That is the price of living. I mean, think of the last time you felt happiness, joy, sadness, anger. In fact, the statistics say that we go through up to and including 15,000 different emotions 
within a 24 hour period. Oh, and thank you for sharing my presentation there, Louisa. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm not sure, let me see if I can go through this because it will actually bring me to answering your question. Okay. And like I can't actually move it, but uh, yeah, I have to move it for you. Ah, you'd have to move it for me. So if you could yeah. um, perhaps just forward it a, a couple of slides, and uh, I, I want to okay. share. Something. So yes, if you can just forward, I wanted to share. That was going to be my introduction. Okay, that's uh, ah. If we stop over here, for example, if you type in work and emotional intelligence, you will get what is this, over 200 million hits, where emotional intelligence is truly becoming the flavor of the month. Of course, I think it is more than the flavor of the month. I think it is something that all of us need in terms of being able to survive and thrive uh, living in the 21st century today. So if you can just forward it uh, one more time. Uh, so I, this is a picture of, I think, myself in, uh, in about 50 years time, where I talk about how the age of the machines is upon us. In fact, what I'm referring to, Louisa, is artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence, AI. So if you look at how the world of technology has begun to make so many things in our lives easier. From the mundane to even complicated tasks, we truly are living in a remarkable age where this technology is slowly but surely taking over even the things that we as human beings would ordinarily do. You can talk about going onto a factory floor, uh, we can talk about working in any number of offices where things have been automated. We talk about big data. We talk about um, uh, all of these things that have to do with artificial intelligence. In fact, if you see on the next slide, the, uh, the World Economic Forum has talks about the fourth industrial revolution. The fourth industrial revolution is exactly what I'm talking about, this advent of or all of this big data and automation taking over our lives. However, they also say that during this fourth industrial revolution, which we're going through right now, the skills that we will need to succeed are actually not necessarily linked to automation. And in fact, social skills will and have become paramount. And amongst those social skills, emotional intelligence features prominently. The World Economic Forum puts out this list of skills that you need and they forecast them two or three or four years out in the future. And every year they've been doing this. And for the last five years, that list has featured emotional intelligence. That is a skill that we as human beings need to develop in spite of, because of this fourth industrial revolution, which is artificial intelligence. If I could have the next screen, please, Louisa. So, uh, and that's just an article to sort of back what I'm saying. There are a lot of articles like this. So this is an article from the Harvard Business Review, which talks about the rise of AI makes emotional intelligence more important. Uh, if we can move on. So what we're saying here is that in the age of AI, the different skills we need, artificial, uh, sorry, emotional intelligence, uh, social skills, communication skills. And by the way, all of those skills are actually linked to emotional intelligence. Now, I I'm going to ask a question. I think Louisa, because you have to keep moving this forward, it's probably easier if I just speak and we can let the, the, the presentation hang there, but maybe this is something I can share with your yeah your absolutely go it for it so i want to ask a, a a question uh a medical question maybe a biological question how many uh cells would you say there are in the human body 
Now that's a rhetorical question since I'm not interacting with everybody, but Louisa, maybe you can answer that question. How many cells do we have in the human body? So our skin, our hair, our organs, you would say how many? That's quite, it's gonna be millions of cells. That's a lot of cells. You're right. In fact, billions. And has that number been quantified? I'm not even sure. But each of those cells, if you were to drill down to the molecular structure of each individual cell, you would see that each cell is not static. If you had a powerful electron microscope, each of those cells is moving. And when things move, they create energy. Hmm. So all of us, as we are sitting or standing or whatever we're doing right now, are actually this sort of huge mass of energy. But here's the rub, Louisa. The energy that we're putting out is actually largely a function of our mood, of our emotions, of our feelings. So if I was to ask the audience right now, how are you feeling now that you're sitting in, listening to me speak all the way from East Africa? Most of you uh, are in America or Canada. Um, how did you wake up today? How was your weekend? Are you feeling hopeful? Are you feeling um, a little maybe irritated? Are you feeling happy? Are you feeling whatever range of emotion you are feeling right now? One of the things about emotional intelligence is about being able to become self-aware and become self-aware in the moment about how you are feeling, particularly when you are perhaps maybe interacting or communicating with other people, maybe your target market. So for example, how am I feeling right now? Well, I can be honest with you. A little earlier today, I was feeling a little bit tired, but now I am here with the fabulous Louisa. You've actually given me a burst of energy. And you know what has happened, Louisa? That energy has been transferred from you to me. Remember how I talked about where all of this mass of billions of cells mm. and our mood and emotions control to a large extent. Yeah. So what has happened is that you have been able to transfer this positive energy through interacting with you and your personality, and just the short information that you have been setting up this, this call. So what I'm trying to say here is that uh, there is something called um, sort of an, an emotional climate and how we feel. And our emotions and our feelings and our mood really can be transferred to somebody else. I mean, you know that you, you can even picture a scenario. You walk into an office and, and, and maybe people are having a meeting. And as soon as you walk in, there's a sort of, uh, uh, there's a dampening in the mood and how those people feel versus the person who walks in and the room lights up, you know, and the person walks in and there's an absolute transfer of, of this energy, which is largely a reflection of the emotion, the mood and the feelings that that person brings in. Now, um, and, 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 and all of this, by the way, Louisa, is sort of my understanding of emotional intelligence. So I want, I want us all to perhaps think of a previous, uh, shall I say boss, you know, maybe a supervisor, could even be a mentor or a coach, somebody who was instrumental in your life, maybe from the past, who typically, when you interacted with them, brought a positive energy. So I think of my first boss when I graduated from, from college and university. My first boss was very inspirational in my life. They, you know, they really mentored me. And every time I interacted with them, there was a sort of transfer of that positive energy, okay? And uh, I want you to think of certain things in terms of interacting with them. So for example, did this particular person, were they quick to, uh, for example, uh, give out praise or to compliment or to say nice things about you or the people they interacted with? You know, uh, were they, for example, when things got a little bit heated, were they the sort of person who are able to sort of control perhaps what they said because they had a great self-awareness and they knew that if I open my mouth to speak, particularly where the temperature of the room is heated, I may say something that, uh, that I will regret later. So I want you to think of sort of those interactions. Now, I want you to contrast that with somebody, again, perhaps a, a former boss or a supervisor or somebody that you reported to, or it could even be a coworker, an, a colleague, who was the opposite of that? 
So somebody who I would say was perhaps a little bit difficult in terms of their interactions with everybody else. So they never apologized when they made a mistake or they never gave credit where credit was due uh, or they never praised you or complimented you or every time you interacted with them, they transferred instead of positive energy to a sort of negative energy and you sort of had to, um, you know, you felt bad because of that. Okay. Now, if you contrast those, those, those two people in terms of the energy that they gave off, one gave off positive energy. In fact, I'll call it anabolic energy. Somebody gave off catabolic energy. And perhaps you had to sort of rank them in terms of one, they were the best and 10, let's say that they were the most difficult. And say you had one of them ranked at number two and one of them ranked at number nine, as you, again, think about how it was engaging with these two uh, particular individuals. One of the things that I'm sure everybody uh, can relate to in terms of their interaction with these people is that how they engaged after interacting with that particular individual. So whether it was actually engaging that particular individual, so uh, uh, en engaging with that uh, particular boss. So you had to go and, um, you know, they asked you to, 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 to go and work on a particular project, or they asked you to go and, uh, and, and file a, 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 a particular uh, piece of work, or whatever it is that you had to do based on that boss asking you to do that as their supervisor or their boss. You are less likely to be motivated. You are less likely to be engaged simply because that person, when they spoke with you, transferred negative energy. So this is what I'm leading to Louisa. How someone shows up affects the way people will engage with them. Mm. And people will engage with that person based on how somebody makes them feel. So that showing up is how I talk to you, how I greet you, how I ask you to do certain things if we're working together, how I treat you as a customer, how I treat you as uh, somebody who's in my office. How I show up absolutely affects how the other person will engage with them. Actually, that is my simple definition of emotional intelligence. The way you show up affects the way people feel. And the way people feel affects how they will engage with you. And emotional intelligence is about engaging people in a way that makes them feel good. That is actually one half of the equation. Because what if somebody makes you feel not so good? So the other half of that is having intelligent responses to how people make you feel. So on one half, make people feel great how you engage them. Because, I mean, make people feel, yeah, make people feel good with how you show up. Because that affects how they will engage with you and even engage with other people. Because that transfer of energy, if I make you feel a certain way and I make you feel bad, or I have you, make you feel a particularly strong, say, negative emotion, the chances are you will transfer that emotion when you go to engage somebody else in the office, subconsciously or consciously. But the second thing is also, if somebody makes me feel that, then I need to have uh, an intelligent way of responding to how that person makes me feel. So you're right in the beginning when you said, it's a set of skills of how we perceive, understand, manage our emotions. That is emotional intelligence. And these have become as important as your intellect. You talk about this EQ. is so sorry. This is so this is so great. I'm just going to pause for a minute. This is say hello to a few people who have come in. Sister Eileen, it's good to have you here in the house. Uh, Sibyl, it's good to have you. Uh, Stacy, it's good to have you. Another Stacy again. Stacy Anderson, it's good to have you in the house. Welcome. It's the civilized presence. And this morning we're dealing on the topic emotional intelligence. Is it a blessing or a curse? I mean, many people do not understand what emotional intelligence is about. And of course, that's why I had to bring in the expert all the way from Kenya 
to explain to us and break it down for us to see why this is so important, um, even as entrepreneurs, as leaders, as professionals, for you to be emotionally intelligent. It's not a set of skills that you can put behind the door or underneath the table. You actually need that. Um, you know, emotional intelligence um, research has shown emotional intelligence will help to boost your credibility. It's going to help to boost your trust with people. It's going to help even with your uh, mental health or improve your profitability or productivity. And that's the conversation we're having this morning. So coming in and let us know where you're joining from. And of course, post the question that you might have uh, for the expert who's ready to take on your questions. So this is going to take me to my next question for you, Mr. Derek, is the issue of emotional reasoning. And I think that emotional reasoning is such a great part of emotional intelligence um, because, you know, you've talked about how we should be able to manage our emotions or even having intelligent responses to how people make you feel. And sometimes a lot of people struggle with that. You know, we all are wired differently. We all are programmed differently, according to Napoleon Hill. And just because of your background, sometimes certain things might mean certain things to you or certain people's behavior might come across in a certain way, it might be different from how you intended to pass it on, but just how they're being perceived. And of course, with the increasing uh, diverse workplaces and welcome Sister Audrey, it's great to have you. You know, there is a need for us to be emotionally intelligent because when there is diverse workplaces, of course, it opens up room for unconscious bias. And this is some of the you know, conversations that we've been having lately in the session, really talking about how people are struggling with managing each other. So what is emotional reasoning? Because I think that we have to understand emotional reasoning um, for us to be emotionally intelligent. And over to you, uh, Mr. Derek. Right. No, thank you. Thank you for that question, uh, Louisa. And what you said is absolutely true. So emotional reason, as I alluded to earlier, is the price of living. I mean, it is actually using the information that we get and then being able to combine it with different facts and information to make the best decision for ourselves and for the other person. So you're with a coworker and they rub you the wrong way and they make you feel triggered or irritated. Or God forbid, a strong emotion like anger. Emotional reasoning is about using <laughs> that information about, I do feel a little bit triggered or angry or irritated by what my coworker said. But rather than perhaps responding in kind, emotional reasoning would say, let me use this particular a strategy to deal with this emotion of anger. It is not about burying the anger. It is not about, it's about using that information that this coworkers made me feel anger and perhaps uh, uh, responding differently. That's where the emotional reasoning comes. So for example, one of the strategies that we talk about that I advise my clients is a simple, and I'm sure a lot of the people on this, uh, on this conference call would be familiar with this. Maybe you take a, a deep breath, you know, you breathe. It might be I decide to maybe step out of the room or walk around the block or around the office. I mean, these are simple things that we do so that we can come back. And rather than respond in anger, perhaps we would do something different. And that's what emotional reasoning is. It's just about taking that information and then perhaps responding in a way that creates a positive now emotion. Not just in yourself, because you have dealt with that anger. But even in the other person who was upset with you for whatever reason it is. Mm. And even more than that, Louisa, when it comes to emotional reasoning. So there's um, the different, we call them competencies. Um, there's a model that, uh, that, I, that I use uh, that I got through my emotional intelligence training as I became a practitioner. So the first one is self-awareness. Self-awareness is about really getting in touch with yourself and your feelings, labeling your feelings. At the end of the day, you go back home and you sit down and just as many feelings as you can remember feeling through that day. Once you start labeling your feelings and getting in touch with how you felt, then you can now develop strategies to deal with it. 
if somebody continuously makes you feel a certain way, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. <laughs> Perhaps you need to do something different, but you can't unless you know and you label and you put down that particular feeling. So that's self-awareness. Secondly, we talk about self-awareness. So in dealing and interacting with other human beings, it is about now becoming a little bit more aware, listening with your inner ear or your third eye, whatever cliche you want to throw in there. So that I can, I can sort of see, as I'm talking to you through the tone of your voice when you respond or your body language, that perhaps what I'm saying might be affecting you. So perceiving, understanding, and acknowledging what you feel. Listening, really listening. And then we talk about authenticity. So being authentic is truly expressing yourself, honoring your commitments. If truly you make me feel a certain way, Louisa, that story you gave at the beginning of this call was about somebody who was not standing up to give their seat, but you were able to use emotional intelligence to tell that person, listen, I really think you should do it. Now, hopefully the way you did it did not upset that person, even though they responded in kind, but you did it in a way where you were just being honest with how you felt. You felt bad that this person didn't stand up for that person. That is authenticity. Now, again, these are different sort of competencies. You choose to apply them when it best suits yourself. If somebody makes me feel bad, I don't necessarily have to say I'm being authentic by immediately telling that person, oh, the way you talk to me really made me feel bad. Because guess what? There's another competency called self-management. Now, self-management is about managing <laughs> all of those feelings that you have. And if somebody makes me feel upset, I might choose to say, based on my relationship with that particular person, perhaps I need to be more resilient. Aha, resilience. That's another emotional intelligence strategy. So I've talked about self-awareness, awareness of other people, um, being authentic, having self-management, and then we can say also having emotional reason. That, that is so great. And thank you so much, uh, Sister Audrey. It's great to have you, Sister Dulcie. It's great to have you in the house. Thank you so much for joining us. Guys, if you are just coming in, I don't want to say that you're late to the party, but it looks like you are. But you will have access to this video later on on my page. And welcome, Rister. That is my sister from Kenya. It's good to have you here. Thank you for joining us. The conversation is emotional intelligence. Is it a blessing? or a curse. So guys, come in and let me know where you're joining us from and bring in your questions. And this is going to take me to my next question for you, Mr. Derek, is, you know, we find that a lot of professionals lack professionalism. And um, I think that is very concerning. Because even uh, on social media, everyone here is, re is here to present themselves in a certain way or you know, connect with your clients, maybe on LinkedIn, on Facebook and, and all of that. Um, you know, and sometimes communication is something that we struggle with. Um, you know, even on social media where you have to type things up, you're still communicating. You might not be meeting that person one-on-one, -on -one, but you're still communicating. Now, I have also learned that emotional intelligence does help you know, professionals or leaders to be able to build and become professional in the right way, professionalism. So how can you break this down to our audience? Like, how does this help you, um, even when you're working with your clients? Um, how does this help you to build um, a great relationship with them? How does emotional intelligence help you in building uh, credibility? You know, uh, all of that, because my um, audience here are entrepreneurs, are professionals, and leaders are the ones who are on the call right now. So how would emotional intelligence help us build all of those great bits and pieces, which of course will get us to um, be able to be visible and present ourselves in the marketplace the right way? Over to you, Mr. Derek. Louisa, that is a terrific question because you have made the link between professionalism and emotional intelligence. And guess what, Louisa? Emotional intelligence, or part of emotional intelligence is about being a positive influence to the people 
that you interact with. That transfer of energy is that positive influence. And you can be a positive influence by how you carry yourself as a professional, professionalist. How you solve problems, how you provide feedback, how you show up, everything that is required, you being a professional, that absolutely is affecting how people will interact with you. And remember, the way that you show up, if I show up as a professional, I will absolutely affect how other people will feel. People might feel good, they might feel proud, whatever emotion that they are feeling. And so there is a direct link, I think. If you want to have a positive influence on other people, then being the best version of yourselves, which to me is what being a professional is. In, in everything that we talk about and that you have talked about over the years in terms of being a true professional, how you dress, how you speak, how you communicate, how you give feedback, all of that is absolutely um, emotional intelligence. Oh, this is great, guys. I don't know if you're enjoying this session, but I am. And I have learned a lot from Mr. Derek this morning. And welcome, Sheriff. It's great to have you in the house. Uh, come in and just let us know where you're joining us from. I have different screens here. One of my screens went off. That's okay. But guys, I am so excited. And we've been having this great conversation with Mr. Derek. I'm just breaking down the concept of emotional intelligence. So if this is something that you've been struggling with, um, I think that there's so much on this session or in the video that you can learn from. And if you're just getting here for the first time, you can have access to this video on my page or try to follow me on, on social media. Are you not following me? Are you kidding? Come on, please follow me on social media. It's so unique experts. I'm on Instagram, so unique experts. And of course, this video will be on YouTube later on today, Louisa Akaizo. And of course you would have access to a lot of videos, almost 200 videos on um, YouTube for you to learn from. So are you a professional in the house? Are you a leader? Um, who are you, an entrepreneur? Emotional intelligence will help you build credibility. Now, this is gonna take me to my last question for you, unless we have another question from the audience. Is, you know, something that is really thriving right now in the workplace is um, conflict, and of course, the conversation of conflict resolution. And conflict, of course, comes in different ways, okay? Now, sometimes I find that we, we get so selfish with ourselves, like we're so, you know, it feels good. I mean, this is why it's called the comfort zone. It feels comfortable to be in your own zone and not think about somebody else. Now, emotional intelligence, of course, really is a great tool in solving conflict, whether it's in the workplace, in the families, in the home. Can you just um, kind of break it down? What kind of steps that we can take? Because, you know, every day we are exposed to different kinds of people in the world. Everyone is upset. Everyone is angry. Everyone is in a hurry. Everyone has something going on. Um, I mean, you know, first thing on Monday morning, you see people honking on you on the street and you're thinking, are you serious? If you are at 7 a.m. are behaving crazy, Oh my goodness, I can imagine what the rest of the day is going to be like. So emotional intelligence is something that everyone needs right now. Even with our children, we need to be emotionally intelligent. So, you know, and you can share, you know, a personal example if you have one. It's what can we do? What are the steps that we can take? So let's say I've never been emotionally intelligent before. I'm just hearing about this wonderful term from Mr. Derek. And I have all these things going on and I'm just like, listen, Louisa, I'm ready to just give up and just throw in the towel. What are the steps that you can begin with in the workplace, in working with other people? What are the steps that you can be, what are the little things that you can do that's gonna make the difference? Over to you, Mr. Derek. Okay, another great question, Louisa. So there are many steps that can be taken, but let me share a story with you since you asked me to. So you talked about Monday morning, people honking at you. So here in Kenya, we have public transportation vehicles known as matatus. Mm. So they're like little mini buses that are usually crammed full of people. They are driven at the fastest speed possible. And I'm sure we have this all over uh, Africa. Yes. 
uh, to take people from you know one stage to to the next so that they can get to work or wherever it is that they're going these vehicles typically are driven recklessly they don't obey the traffic rules and they used to drive me crazy in fact very often i would get into things like um even mini accidents with them or if one of them cut me off in traffic instead of going to work i would end up chasing it and ending up 30 miles from where i was going i mean what i'm trying to say is i was not emotionally intelligent because of the feelings that this uh, that these vehicles or the drivers would trigger in me. You know, it would be extreme feelings. I'd feel really angry and annoyed and, uh, and, and I'd want to do something. And typically it would be chasing them and, and yelling at them and rolling down the window and, and making all sorts of gestures. Now, that was me three or four years ago. I have since become emotionally intelligent. So you question, Louisa, was how do you deal with people who perhaps rub you the wrong way, like these vehicles used to do. Well, this is what my trick I did with Matatu drivers, or with these drivers, is I brought in myself uh, an emotion that is perhaps one of the most difficult when it comes to emotional intelligence, and that mm. is empathy. To empathize with the person who drives you the wrong way. So empathizing with a driver who drives recklessly, my empathy would take the form of for example, I imagine that this person, you know, I'm putting myself in their shoes, doesn't have a driving license from a recognized driving school, right? This is Africa, after all. I mean, not everybody. Or perhaps they, half of their salary is taken by their boss, and that's why they have to run and make as many trips as possible, and they break the road rules, all right? Or perhaps, you know, um, they have to bribe a policeman. You know, all of these scenarios. And when I start sort of empathizing, uh, and even having a little bit of compassion. In fact, I'll link those two together. Empathy and compassion for the other person. Guess what, Louisa? I tend not to get angry and as upset. And maybe I might be a little bit triggered because, you know, this person still, you know, cut me off in traffic. But that strong emotion that I used to feel, trust me, it goes all the way. So if I can say anything to the people who are on this call, is that bring in empathy and compassion for the other person, for the other human being. Look at that other person, they're a human being just like you. You mm. may not know what's going on in their life, but if you have an ounce of empathy and compassion, that strong emotion, that even that difficult person that you have to deal with, mm. uh, you, you will find that you perhaps uh, find a, 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 a better way of dealing with them or you don't feel as strong as emotion as that person may have triggered in you. It's amazing how it works, empathy. And by the way, empathy means removing your ego out of the equation. Because typically that's what's driving us to feel that way. It's, it's my ego. You cut me off in traffic. I have the right of way. Why did you do that? Remove your ego out of the way and empathize with the other individual. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is wonderful. We have a lot more people who are coming in. And I think it's so important for me to let you know, we're so popular in Kenya today. We have Rista Bless from Kenya. We have Dr. Juma from Kenya. We have um, Eric Salami from Kenya. We have Anthony Warimo from Kenya. Look at that. And my friend is here, Stekani Prince. Thank you so much for making out time. And we have Charles Emerua from Nigeria. Thank you for joining us this morning. It's been such a great conversation. And I just love that you mentioned um, um, you know, empathy and compassion, because that's something that is lost, you know, empathy, compassion and restraint. I think three of them kind of like, and they're, they're in the same boat. And, you know, empathy is so strong because it, it gets you to begin to think about the other person. You know, I'm going to share an example with you. We had a conversation, you know, with another colleague of mine who was, um, a, you know, she's a sexual expert. And she deals with abused victims and all of that. And she talked about how, you know, a little child, a girl who was abused, whose parents, of course, were ready to go and kill, you know, the uh, <laughs> the parents were like, you know what, do not lock this guy up. I want to just shoot him and kill him. So I thought, yes, it is so painful, of course. Nobody 
wants to have their daughter abused. But another way to think about it is, what if this guy has a problem? What if this guy needs some help? What if this guy is mentally disabled? What about, think about that. What about shifting from a place of thinking, this person just wanted to kill my daughter. And it's very difficult, especially being a mom, to think about it that way. And moving on to the next level, which is, you know, throwing off all the negative energy and just looking at it like, what if this guy needs some help? What can I do to stop him from doing what he's doing? What can I do to educate other people that this is not the best way to go about things, so do not do this again? What can we do? How can we just have a conversation with him and find out that maybe he was about to take his own life and out of frustration, decided to do something crazy to somebody else. So guys, I'm not saying that inter emotional intelligence is going to be easy. It's not. No. It, but we have to be intentional about it. And this is why I shared that example, because it's such a, it's such a really mind wobbling example, because you're thinking, oh my goodness, what if I'm the mother of the girl? Oh, if I had a gun, so I was going to shoot this guy and all of that. But Emotional intelligence is really about you moving to the next level, pushing down all the negative energy that could be coming your way. At that point, you feel like you want to just take off your clothes and just start boxing and feel like you're in the wrestling beat and just kill somebody. But taking a deep breath and thinking again that what if this person's level of awareness is really not up to where I am? What if, what if, what if? So I don't want you leaving the session and thinking that uh, Louisa said it's going to be easy because trust me, just because you've just heard about emotional intelligence, someone is going to try you out today. <laughs> this is how it works out because you've heard of emotional intelligence. Someone in your office is just going to get on your last nerve today. Your kids are going to get on your last nerve today. It's going to give you an opportunity to be able to use what you just learned in the session. So like our guest has just shared, take a deep breath, really just pause and just think about it as, you know what, you know, my, my father, you know, when I started driving, my father said to me, the best way to be the best driver is to look at every other driver as being a weakling and they don't know what they're doing. So that way you were approaching them with care that, hey, they can show up and they can do something crazy right now. Um, I thought that was, I think that was emotional intelligence because sometimes people do things to you and you just feel like you wanna just kind of squeeze them on the neck, but take that moment just to breathe, just to breathe. Think about empathy, think about compassion and just breathe. I mean, even when you don't want to do it, just say, oh, just because of Louisa, I'm just going to breathe because Louisa said I should do this. OK. And, you know, emotional intelligence helps us to solve a lot of, you know, lifelong problems. You know, research is showing us that emotional intelligence is a great tool that's helping out with mental health. Because sometimes, you know, you know, I'm of African descent and mental health has got so much levels and stigma and all of that. But I'm so excited that we're getting to the time in our lives where we've been able to see that mental health doesn't mean that there's something wrong with these people. It just shows that we need to care about them some more. And sometimes mental health only gets so bad when it's not been managed properly. It could begin with little things like depression, like frustration. And this is something that shows up every day. So someone could be frustrated, someone could be depressed, and you are not emotionally intelligent, you're getting things worse for that person. So please pay attention, just be in the present, pay attention and think about all those people around you. How can you make their, their life a lot better? How can you ease their experience of today? Let someone say, I was having such a crazy day until I met with Mr. Derek until I spoke to Mr. Derek, he made me feel good. Always try to be the reason why someone feels that they should leave again.
So that's my, you know, that's my little uh, nuggets. Of course, the expert has shared so much with us uh, this morning. And guys, step out today and try to be emotionally intelligent. Go away from thinking about yourself. Go away from that selfish way of thinking and begin to think about other people. How is what I'm doing affecting the next person? How would I feel if I was on the other side of the table receiving the same treatment? Always think about that. Try to pause. And even as a professional, sometimes you get this very annoying email or annoying text message. Don't just jump on it and respond with anger, boom, because you cannot pick them up again. When you lose trust, when you lose credibility, you will never be able to get that again. So guys, do me a favor and thank you so much for all of you who are sharing my post. Please do me a favor and share this on your page. This message is so relevant, is so important for all of us. There's so much pain and hatred in the world. I think that we can all become change agents and make the world a better place. So if you want to uh, connect with uh, Mr. Derek uh, Banger, he's on social media as public image on social media. Follow him on his page. Um, get on Instagram. He's there. He's on LinkedIn. He's on all the places where you would find serious experts, okay? And when you get in, send a message and say, Mr. Derek, I was on the show listening to you and I would love to work with you. So he's taking on clients from all over the world. It doesn't matter where you are. And thank you so much for my sisters and brothers from Kenya. Louis, I see you. Thank you so much. That's Etiquette and Protocol School in Kenya. It's so good to have all of you here and your support means so much to me. Thank you for hanging on with me because without you guys, the show will not go on. And guys, I remember last week I had promised you that we are gonna get started with the book study. So it's actually gonna start this week. I'm excited about the book study. And those are our lunch hour sessions, which are the 15 minutes lunch hour sessions. A lot of people have been asking me of the lunch hour sessions. I will provide the link where you can register because I actually want you to register this time, register to get in the session. It's a free session, 15 minutes, but I need you to register. So you take it on seriously. There's gonna be some homework, some things to do. And so please um, keep a tap and turn on your notifications so that you see when I'm online, there are a lot of great things that will be coming on. And Mr. Derek, I wanna say thank you for being here. Thank you for the work that you do. Thank you for what your company is doing. Thank you for just being the great and positive impact that you are all over the world. It was so great to work with you and we hope to see you very soon again. I have to be civil and let you go on time so that you can come back another time. So thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Louisa. Have a fantastic morning. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Have a good day. Bye.